Okay, I think we're back. Apologize for that. Uh, some internet problems there. Uh, two minutes to go, third quarter. The Comets up 39-37. Uh, as I said, two minutes to go, third quarter action here at Alton. The Alton Comets and the Thayer Bobcats and JV action. Clark with it to Gabriel inside. Kind of uh, probably the biggest thing you missed was Cole Trantham got his fourth foul, so he's on the bench and he uh, won the leading scorers for the Bobcats, or for the Comets, excuse me. And nice defense that time by Gabriel. Takes it away from as Prince lost the handle there, so the Comets coming the other way. Up to 125 to go, third quarter. Cooper Clark with it in the wing. <laughs> Been a great ball game. The Bobcats down 13 at one time, but come back, and we're gonna have a timeout for the Alton Comets. Yeah, Tom, uh, thanks for kind of running the show there for a little bit. We had about eight problems there, just back to back to back to back to back to back to back. To back. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, kind of recap here at halftime, the Comets were up 7, 33-26. But as I said, the, Com the Bobcats uh, fought back, and they've got within two, which they're in two now. And the Comets a little bit of run, but on the bench is Cole Trantham, and so – you know, don't know when Coach Miller will bring him back out. Uh, uh, really, that's the only major foul problem. Uh, Whalen has three for the Comets, and really the Bobcats not in foul trouble. The Comets have been aggressive and committed quite a few more fouls than the Bobcats. Uh, it kind of helped point-wise there, but the Comets uh, having trouble putting in the basket lately. Here we go. Dylan Whalen with it out front with Easton Pitts on him, and we're going to have a foul on Pitts for the reach. That will be Easton's second. Uh, foul count 4-2, Comets 4, Bobcats 2. And Comets with it once again. Up by 2. And they go to Cook Clark, left wing, into the corner. Cochran wide open for 3, not there. 5 for the rebound. Gabriel had it, but he lost the handle. And here come the Bobcats the other way. Chance to tie, or even if this goes... Take the lead, but it was short, and here come the uh, Comets the other way. Marcus Cochran to uh, Gabriel up, and not there. Cook Clark fighting for it, trying to go up strong. We're going to have a foul. And we had a substitution in the game. Is uh, Cisco in the game for, uh, uh, I believe that's Jaden for the uh, Alton Comets. Cook Clark way out front to Whalen. Down to 30 seconds. And Cochran with it. Cooper, Clark. And looks like the Comets may be going for the last shot for the third quarter here, up two. Whalen to Clark. Cochran, shot fake, goes up, puts it up, not there. Five for the rebound. The Bobcats have it with eight seconds. A chance to tie as, as we – or take the lead. If they can pop a three, Pitts will go up for three. And Big hit shot. It. That's a big shot there yep. in the quarter. And just like that, the Bobcats uh, go into the fourth quarter, leading by one. And, you know, the Bobcats overcome was down seven, so they outscored the Comets there uh, by eight in the third quarter. Just shows if you, you know, keep fighting uh, and battling what can happen. So as we kind of expect it here, uh, and hopefully the next game goes the same way, it's going to go down the wire. So we're eight min or seven minutes uh, uh, left of this JV action. If you enjoy basketball, even be junior varsity action, this has been a good game to watch. Both teams have battled hard, shot the ball well, uh, you know, dove on the floor, whatever it takes. Been a good good three quarters. Yeah, 40 to 39. Uh, again, it, I, I figure it's probably gonna be pretty back and forth here over the next seven minutes. I would say, and looks like uh, Coach Honeycutt's gonna roll the uh, uh, Dice with uh, Cole Trantham back in starting the fourth uh, with four fouls. 
And like I said, uh, for Coach Steed, the really the JV Bobcats not in any kind of uh, uh, major foul trouble. So here we go. Bobcats start the fourth quarter with it. Spencer, they go to corner to pitch. He's going to put up another three. He's feeling it. Not there, but nice rebound by Prince, but he can't finish. And Cook Clark with the rebound. Going to hand it off to Cochran, bring it the other way. The Comets down one. Harrington with it to Whalen. Fakes, gives to Harrington. Shot fakes, pulls up, puts it on the floor, shoots, not there. And fight for the rebound, and we're going to have a foul on... Looks like it's going to be on uh, Mark Spencer. I believe they're pointing at 14. Evidently, in the scrum there, he grabbed somebody by the arm. So it'll be Comet basketball under their own basket. I show that's the first foul. Uh, excuse me. They're showing two on Mark. Looking to get it in way up front to uh, Cochran, to Whalen, to to Cole Trantham. That's the reason I said that was kind of big. Do you put him in there or not? Because he, at his spot from about 10 or 12 feet. So 41 40, the Comets up by one. Down to the six minute mark, fourth quarter. And a long three, not there. And the Comets coming the other way. Waylon to Harrington at the high post to Cooper Clark. Waylon and Coach Honeycat from the reset. Comets up one. Give and go to Cooper. Nice play there Cooper by the Comets. Clark to uh, Cochran. Looks like they've done that before played together. So the Bobcats coming the other way down three. Nice drive that time by. Uh, Spencer couldn't get it to fall, fight for the rebound, and the Comets come up with it. Headed their way up three. And good defense down there by the Bobcats. It's loose on the floor. And Coach Steed going to call a timeout uh, right before uh, Easton was able to uh, roll and get away past the ball, but it'll be Bobcat ball anyway. So 4.58 to go, the fourth quarter, 43-40. The uh, Comets on top of the Bobcats. We'll see what the Bobcats drop here. They've been pretty good coming out of timeouts of uh, whatever the coach draws up, coming out and executing, getting the basket. We'll see if they can do it again. Want to remind everybody at the end of this game will be the Alton High School homecoming activities where they'll crown the homecoming queen. And then we'll have uh, the Alton Comets and the Thera Bobcats. Uh, yeah, that that varsity game is going to be something. That's what a lot. I mean, a lot of people come out for homecoming, but a yep. lot of people come out for that game as well. Well, anytime small schools and you get uh, two rivals that are state ranked, it doesn't get much better than that. Well, I've seen. I mean, I've seen people from other towns here. Yeah, if there wasn't I, as many games being a Tuesday night, so many games going on there. Would be, yeah, be even more just just to see these two towns. And Dylan Whalen able to t tap it away. He goes down the other end and up and under for Whalen. And able to t tap it away. He goes down the other end and up and under. And the ball loose on the other end. Uh, Spencer thought he got fouled, but no call. And been a few of those both ways tonight, but the officials letting him play. Comets up five, approaching the four minute mark. Cole Trantham up and shoots. I'm telling you, that's his spot. And that was big when he had to sit down with four fouls. He just got to be smart and stay in the game because they need his offense. Bobcats the other way. Yeah, they're trying to create that separation a little bit again That's here. Spencer with it. Out front to Prince. And Pitts with it. Little give and go. He's, he's a flashy little guard. Loses the handle on it. And he's trying to get it back from Cochran. And Cochran keeps it alive. Double, triple team, but able to get it to Whalen. And they're able to find Cooper Clark wide open inside. Nice pass from Waylon to Clark. And quickly the Comets up nine. <clears throat> I 
And inside was uh, Roland Spencer took it inside. Once again, some contact, but no call, and the officials say play on. And so Comets the other way. Cole Trantham for three out of the corner. He's Big feeling it. shot. Huge shot with three minutes left in this game. And coming the other way, the Bobcats going to try to answer with a three. Not there. And guess who? Man of the fourth quarter, Cole Trantham with the rebound. Double team in backcourt is Whalen. And we're going to have a foul on, that's going to be on Brandon Prince. A little aggressive there. I think a little frustrated. And I understand, like I said, the officials letting them play. And this is where you kind of got to learn to, you know, keep your emotions in check. Both teams. Comets with it up 12. Devin Harrington with it. Look at that mismatch. Yep. And nice play by Marcus Cochran. And 14 point lead for the Comets. Hard to believe it was just, you know, going into the quarter, the Bobcats were up one. Up, yeah, we're up one. Yeah, they haven't Across scored the pit, yet. the pit, deep three, and not there. And Cook Clark with the rebound. Long out, outlet pass to Cochran, goes up, spins, and finishes. That looked like a cue shot there, a pull shot. I mean, you talk about some English on it. And 56-40, 2.14 to go, fourth quarter action. This is just about turned into an Alton blowout. It had, this is one of those, but the score isn't gonna indicate uh, the Alpha. type of game, because like I said, you know, Bobcats were up uh, one at the end of the fourth quarter, then all of a sudden it's just, uh, and really that's JV ball for you. I mean, it can happen, you get more so. Varsity kids don't get quite as rattled as they do, uh, you know, uh, JV. But good experience for both teams, because like I said, I, I like the officiating, not because Alton's ahead, they're letting them play, and this is where you, you know, kids need to learn. Don't look at the coach. Don't look at your parents. Don't look at the referee. If there's contact, play through it. Yeah. And because uh, uh, in big games, uh, you know, at times the officials let that stuff go. And I think they should. I think yeah. that. Uh, I think you, you get in a game like this, you don't you don't want to control the game if you're an official. You definitely don't want to. You know, I see some officials. I've seen them before that try to almost, almost it's like they take the outcome into their own hands. Right. I don't like that. I think you want to let the kids play, uh, let them be physical. Basketball is a physical sport. I mean, it's not as physical as football or anything right. like that, but it's it, there's supposed to be a little bit of contact, I think. Yep. And like you said, I think it's been both ways. And like I said, the third quarter of the Comets got frustrated a little bit there because of uh, there was some contact and everything. The ball wasn't going, and it kind of flipped here. But we've got two minutes to go, and who knows what happens here. Bobcat ball, they're down uh, 16, just over two minutes to go. They go inside, nice pass from uh, Spencer to uh, Prince. Nice play. Like I said, it seems like every time Thayer comes out of a timeout, they score, but the Comets quickly break the press, and it's Cole Trantham. He has nine. Here in this quarter, shot is up by Pitts, not there. Cook Clark with the rebound. Comets on the run. They like to push it. If they can get the easy one, they'll do it. Marcus Cochran to, to Dylan Whalen. I, I to, think to, to Cole Trantham from deep. He is on fire in this quarter. Wow. 61-42. I mean, it's just absolutely, you're going wow. And now we're going to have a block on Dylan Whalen. Nice penetration by Rowan Spencer as he took it into him. And that's what you need to do is force the defense. And he did a good job. And on Dylan Whalen, they're showing that's four on Dylan. Uh, fifth foul against the Comets, so they'll inbound it. Pitts takes it right down the lane. And not there. And battle for the rebound. Devin Harrington with it. Cole Trantham get it to a guard, which is Marcus. Triple team to Harrington, and we're going to have a push in the backcourt, which is about all they could do. Probably save the layup. I think that's going to go against Prince. And it is. And like I said, that was really all uh, Brandon could do. So the Comets ball, and they're up 19. 61-42. Harrington looks for the shot. Not there goes the corner. 
Cochran, Clark had uh, Trantham inside, didn't see him. Uh, nice pass to Clark to Harrington, not there. Trantham able to run it down in the corner, way out front to Whalen, 40 seconds to go. And we're gonna have another foul out front to stop the clock there was on uh, uh, Rowan Spencer. That'll be his third. 39.5 left. And it's gonna be one in bonus for uh, Dylan Whalen. And we've got some subs checking in, see if they're, hopefully they're on the uh, program here. Eleven is Dayton McCormick, it looks like. The else we've got 23 should be John Dukowski. And number 10, I'm not showing, I apologize, he's not on the program, so. Apologize to his uh, family. First free throw is up by Dylan Wayne. He has three for the quarter. And 62-42, the Comets up by 20, 39.5, and the second free throw is good. And 63-42. Definitely the score isn't gonna indicate the type of game it was. Deep three by the Bobcats, not there. That was uh, Spencer with it, Rowan Spencer with a deep three and the Comets gonna walk it up. River Haddock in the game for the Comet. Uh, they kind of need to get out of the corner and- Stepped on the baseline. Yep, that's the reason you don't wanna, don't wanna be there. Cause basically to get out of the defense, you gotta go out of bounds or back court. So the Bobcats will go the other way, 17 seconds to go. Rowan Spencer dribbling it up. And the three is put up by uh, Mark Spencer, not there. Rebound, Bobcats still fighting for it. And will we get one more shot? Yes, and the shot is by Rowan, not there in the final, 63-42. The Alton Comets JV by 21 over the bot their Bobcats. So I believe now we will have homecoming, correct? Yes, it and is homecoming, yes. We will follow with the varsity game. We are gonna have to mute everything so that we don't pick up music and we will be back uh, for uh, varsity.
Welcome to Alton Sports Network Live. Andy Earls here, your owner, operator. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for all the support. This is year two of Alton Sports Network, and we're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. And we'll be right back with live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this live production. I want to personally say thank you to Dana Roberts and Colton Burnett from Alton Bank for all their great hospitality in our first year at Alton Sports Network. Locally owned and proud to be your hometown bank. Two convenient locations with Alton Bank in Alton, Missouri and Bank of Birchtree in Birchtree, Missouri. Let their friendly, professional, and knowledgeable staff help you in your business with all your banking needs. Contact the Alton branch at 417-778-7211. Alton Bank and Bank of Birchtree. Worth changing banks for. You will find a warm welcome at Shepherd's View. When you need that transition from nursing home care to a home, Shepherd's View is the right option to prepare you for living successfully and safely alone once again. When the demands of home upkeep, managing medications, and meal preparation become too much, Shepherd's View staff are ready to provide all the care you need. Our staff are well trained to provide safe, efficient personal care, diabetic care, nutritious meals, mediation administration, and social activities. Shepherd's View, here for you. West Plains Savings and Loan has been serving customers in West Plains and surrounding communities such as Alton, Couch, and Thayer since 1919. If you need an ag loan, consumer loan, business loan, or home loan, come see them at 417 West Broadway in West Plains, Missouri, or call 417-256-3042. The loan officers at West Plains Savings and Loan will be happy to sit down with you and talk to you about meeting any loan needs you might have. West Plains Savings and Loan is an equal housing lender and a member FDIC. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, we'll look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors, and designs, fridge magnets, car decals, and anything else you can imagine decal-wise. Owner Hannah Eddy has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals. When I'm not here bringing you the Alton Sports Network live streams, I'm working at Baldwin Chevrolet in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Been selling cars for 15 years now. I would love the opportunity to earn your business. We have four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from, and the majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me, Andy Earls, at Baldwin Chevrolet, or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. Alton Sports Network is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report, Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company, Dogpack Media, and our beloved Alton Sports Network. New to this season for Redline is the addition of Summersville Wildcats Live. If you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming event near you, simply reach out to myself, Andy Earls, at 501-413-9715. Redline, connect the world. Subscribe to our very own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider Channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Weekly posts, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. College Basketball Insider with Austin Bradley. Don't forget that select Alton Sports Network live streams will be seen on our Red Line Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and the YouTube app. Added advantage over Facebook, like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to subscribe to our Red Line Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go comments. As we record this ad, our Facebook page is up to nearly a whopping 1,500 followers in less than one full year. That is incredible considering the population in the Alton city limits. 
and we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but of these hardworking Comet and Luddy Comet athletes. Our streams have been seen by many scouts and college coaches, so let's keep this momentum going into our second year at ASN. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Comets. Hey, it's never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Alton Sports Network. When you sponsor us, you aren't just supporting the people who support Alton Athletics. You're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Comets in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook or reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Comets. I've got people standing up in front since we get it. I'll get the starters for you. And now it's going to get loud because they're introducing the Alton Comets starting five. I did hear that Landry Pitt uh, will not be starting, will not be playing tonight uh, due to sickness. So I'm guessing Lane Grimes will probably start in his place. 
but both teams pretty much, uh, you talk about two teams that know each other. They've been going at it since elementary. Uh, four seniors for the uh, Alton Comets. And I think there were six total, maybe down to five. They'll start four seniors. Each team will start four seniors probably. Uh, it'll be Cisco Smith or DeWolf, the seniors and the junior Steele. And the Bobcats will probably go with Andrews, Gage Pitts, Keaton Nicholson, Aiden Burns, and Lane Grimes. This is big time. Yep, and the fun game. I mean, there's, like said earlier during the JV, this is what, uh, you know, as a player, you dream about packed house, loud. Uh, this is what you and your buddies talk about after you graduate, you know, when you get together after that. Remember that? Uh, when we played there, packed house, homecoming. So eight minutes on the clock. Uh, Jeremy Haynes uh, got the basketball and wanting to get, looked like, wanting the janitor to clean up some popcorn or something. We're about ready to start. Jeremy Haynes, a good official. I'll tell you, I don't think I would want to officiate this game, though. You know, actually, you know, uh, uh, as an official will tell you, a lot of times the bigger games, especially with two teams like this, are actually easier to officiate. The better the teams, the easier because they know how to play. They move their feet. They don't use their hands. They play it the right way where you get good coach teams. It's where you run into kind of the uh, teams that, you know, hate to say not wealth coach, but just, you know, always out of position and grabbing and everything. And and I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised there's not a lot of fouls called this game because they're both aggressive but but they play good defense, uh, you know, smart not to just you know go over go over somebody's back on a rebound and and you know just this you know stupid stuff. Just sure as I say that, there'll be 60 fouls, but I'll uh -huh. be surprised because they're both both really well coached, you know, experienced teams. When you've got four seniors on both teams, you know, and really also just the numbers, neither team really wants any of their starting five to get in foul trouble. Right. Neither team really that deep, you know, and go down the bench, but they really don't, uh, really don't want to. Here we go. Looks like Keaton Nicholson and Chandler Cisco. He better throw it pretty high, and he does. And Bobcats uh, with it. Gage Pitts will run the point for the Bobcats. Coach his son. It'll be interesting to see here uh, how their response to some adversity after they took that loss at Willow Springs right. the other day. Nicholson went inside and an easy two for Nicholson. And half court pressure, a look like the Bobcats going, uh, starting to say man, usually to match up and I believe it is a matchup zone. Kind of look like a man, they look like they're following someone going through, but. Christian Orr ain't got anybody within a mile of yeah, nice pass. Yeah, and they found him, yep. And that's where you want to attack. They they into that one three one. Andrews with it out the gauge pits. Burns to Grimes. High post to Burns. Look the shot and ball tipped by whoa Brandon and Wolf and came off the, some of the scenery for homecoming. Got him in the head. Going to be Bobcat basketball underneath their own basket. Uh, two all six fifty seven to go. Uh, first quarter. Gage pitch to uh, inbound it. Jordan off uh, Andrews and turn the ball over. Ryland still with it the other way to, to the Uh Jacob Smith open, kind of thought about jacking the three, does not. Back out to Steele. To Smith looking at Orr. Grimes on uh, the Wolf. Wolf goes under, releases. And Cisco for three, in and out, not there. The Wolf had it and slapped away, but Grimes comes up with it again. Now looking to score, and Grimes with the block from behind. Fans kind of wanted some contact, like the JV, letting them play. Nicholson with it to Andrews out front, not there. Fight for the rebound, and it's going to be Wyatt basketball as Burns and Orr fought for the basketball. A lot of hustle here by both teams yep. early on. Want that ball? Yes. 
Pitch with pressure on Steele or with the screen. Smith to Cisco. Pulls up from three, and that one not there, but the Wolf with it goes up, or Smith, excuse me, and he's going to be fouled. See who the foul goes on. Number 35, and, Nicholson. Yep, and that will be Keaton, Keaton's first. So Smith at the line to shoot two. Wow, and that one never got above the rim. I'd say a case of the nerves there for Jacob. 2-2, two, two, 5.55 to go first quarter. Jacob Smith get, trying to give the Comets the lead here early. This one is up and good for Jake. Jordan Andrews to Burns. Comets playing zone gauge pitch from out front. Not there. Burns with the rebound, double team goes up, and Burns scores. Nice finish by Burns there over the over the con, over the uh, contest. Yeah, good defense by Alton. Yep. So four three Bobcats. The Wolf with it. Right wing Cisco. Down to Orr. Goes up strong. Bully ball. Yep. That's what that is. Bully ball. Yep. Tough matchup for anybody when he gets it down there when he really wants to score. He's become, as the years gone, gone on, he's got a lot stronger, a lot more aggressive. So Comets up 5-4, Andrews with it out front. Nick drives, nice take. Very Off nice take, finished by Thayer there. Coach Pitts is gonna call a timeout, six to five. Yep, and uh, Coach uh, Kelly wanting to talk to his guys is, uh, You've got to uh, block off the baseline, but both teams kind of play in the same defense, and that's where, uh, you know, you can attack from us the baseline. And both teams have uh, Orr's done it a couple times down there, and, and like I said, Nicholson did the same thing, attacking along the baseline. So it's 6-5, Thayer Bobcat, 4.58 to go, first quarter action here. Like I said, number one, 3A team in the state, Thayer Bobcats, and they're number nine, 2A team, Alton Commons. A win for Alton tonight. They ain't going to be number nine very long. They're, they're, no. They are going to skyrocket yep. up, though, up yep. those rankings. Yep. And people kind of wonder 11 and 4 how you'd be ranked, but when you've lost to four ranked teams, uh, different classes, uh, uh, kind of makes a difference. The Wolf with, to steal. To Smith. Nice, nice shot. Give fake. and go there. Nice fake there inside to get open for that basket. Very nice. I love seeing. I love seeing those yeah. kind of moves make me yeah. happy. Yep. Like I said, both teams are, are, you know, they're good teams. They're not just, I mean, got some athletes, but good teams, good team ball. Nicholson with it. And this is going to get the, uh, the crowd a little bit uh, up. Uh, kind of a late whistle on the reach there. And they're going to call uh, Tay on Cisco. I thought it was DeWolf, but they're saying it was Cisco that reached in. So, <coughs> Bobcat basketball. Gage pitch to trigger it out of bounds. Comets up 7-6. The Burns up and Burns scores. Makes it look easy. <laughs> Aiden Burns actually originally from Mammoth Spring, isn't he? Yes, he was all state as a freshman and transferred to Thayer, yes. Uh, he can get up. He's a player. Down to the Wolf, and I thought maybe he might do his curl under, but he kicks out. Wow, what a Steele. shot. But Ryland still for three. Back and forth, yep. to and fro. As a gauge pitch into the corner to Lane Grimes at the spot. Not there this time. Chandler Cisco with it. One on two, and he keeps his dribble alive and started to attack baseline. Good defense by Jordan Andrews. And then we're going to have a foul. I believe it's going to be on Lane Grimes. Couldn't quite get there quick enough to intercept the pass. Cisco yet to score in this game, I believe, isn't that? No, he has not. Cisco looking inbound, get it to Smith, wide open. Had uh, Orr at the high post, chose not to set the offense. Comments up two. We're down inside four minutes, first quarter. Chandler Cisco way up front. Thought shot to DeWolf. DeWolf penetrates to Cisco. Shot fake. Now he That's pulls up. That's his shot. And that one not there. 
And Andrews with the foul, and we're going to have a reach. <coughs> Uh, foul on number two. Uh, which is Brandon DeWolf with his first. And we have Burns inside, catches at the high post. And two more for Burns. Burns with six. So nice. we're, t we're tied at ten. Yeah, nice pull up, Jay, there by Burns. Can't get, doesn't get much prettier than that. Yep. DeWolf with it to uh, Cisco. Got Gage Pitts on him. Ryland still to Smith. Way across to Steele. Goes baseline to Orr. Orr goes up. Tough shot. Nice finish. Comments back up 12-10 as this the old saying in sports, like a heavyweight fight. Just takes turns pounding each other. Andrews for the long three, not there. Comet's clear. That was Christian Orr. Chandler Sisko with it. He's got Burns in his face. And calling a walk on Sisko. I thought that was a nice crossover by Sisko, but yeah. Yeah, the I official didn't, thought uh, different. Yeah, and it was kind of a, hate to say, kind of a late call on top of it. He made his move, and, and I'm like you. I'm not for sure. Chandler's like a lot of these kids in this game right there. They're they're so quick and such good footwork. It's not always what it seems. Gage Pitts with the shot, not there. Or with another rebound out to Smith. And he takes it inside fakes, not there. Cisco out for three. Got and it. And Chandler Cisco for three. He's on the board now. Yeah, 15-10. Comets up by five. Andrews for uh for there yet to score yeah. as well. Grimes along, which he can shoot the three. And you know, Lane. that was a good contest, though. Yep. Uh, Jacob Smith, wasn't it? Yep. And I think we're going to have a foul on Jordan Andrews getting a little aggressive. And that will be foul number one on Andrews. <clears throat> but that's the deal with the experience of both of these teams. All five of them for either team's not afraid to put the shot up, you know, in big moments. Chandler Cisco with it. Jacob Smith way across to Ryland Steele. Saved it from going out of bounds. And here comes Andrews. Goes up and contested and went off, was blocked by Cisco and DeWolf there. Went off Andrews' hip. And we're going to have a sub in the game. It's going to be Corey Miller in for Christian Orr. I think that's just to give Christian a breather. You know, fast-paced game. Both teams going up, and, and you have to play hard every possession. Corey Miller in the corner, and just about throws it away as Gage Pitts got in the uh, passing lane. Going to be Comet basketball in front of the Thayer bench. 107 to go, first quarter action, 15-13. Comets leave the Bobcats at the Comet Dome. The Ryan is still with it out front. Jacob Smith. Trying to make a play, spin move, kicks to Chandler Cisco for three. Got Chandler it. Cisco with another three. Chandler with six. Back, back to a five-point game. Jordan Andrews out to uh, Burns. Not there. Five for the rebound. Going to be off uh, Andrews' ball. foot, and it will be. Oh wow. Oh, I. <laughs> sorry, I sure thought that went off Jordan's foot. But anyway, green basketball, doesn't matter what I think. And the Bobcats with 40 seconds to go. We'll see if they go for one shot here. 18-13, they're down five. Grimes with it out front. The Burns. The Grimes. I mean, I'll be curious to see how the Comets play this because 98% of the time, you know who takes the, sh well, and this year as I say that Gage Pitt scores but they usually it. they run it down, and it's Jordan Andrews. And then uh, we turn it over, and Burns steals it for another quick two. Comets go to sleep on the inbounds there. Jacob Smith with a floor and not away. there. And we're going to have a reach-in foul on top of that then. The Comets just basically uh, going brain dead for about 30 seconds there, and it's going to cost them. The foul was on. Uh, 
Brandon DeWolf. That's his second with .8. It's going to have to be a catch and fire. He got it up. Oh, wow. And so we're going to end the first quarter. It's going to be 18-17. This game. Uh, but a four-point uh, play right there for where the Comets and DeWolf picking up his second foul. So really big 15, 20 seconds there. My bad. Thank you. That didn't hit anybody, did it? I just dropped one of the stands off the. Uh, so, as everybody expected, it was going to be a shootout. And after one quarter, the Alton Comets 18, the Thayer Bobcats 17. Uh, for the scoring, we had Chandler Cisco with two threes with six. Christian Orr with six. Uh, Jacob Smith, three. Ryland Steele with a three. And for the Thayer Bobcats, Jay Gage Pitts, a pair. Uh, Keaton Nicholson, four. Uh, Lane Grimes, three. And the big story has been Aiden Burns with eight. And so that should add up uh, 18 to 17. Anyway, that's what's on the scoreboard. We're getting ready to start the second quarter here. Christian Orr back in for uh, who's out? Jacob Smith is out, getting a breather. The, the Comets or the Bobcats still with their starting five. We've got Nicholson, Burns, Pitts, Andrews, and Grimes. And Ryland still goes baseline to Christian Orr, blocked by Burns. That time he was afraid of getting a charge, and he pulled up, and Burns just blocked it. Burns taking it inside, dishes out to Andrews to Gage Pitt. Gage penetrates, pulls up the short jumper, not there, and rebound by Orr. Orbit. Uh, and was... We had the outlet to Miller, wasn't looking, and the com Bobcats come with it the other way. And so Bobcats with the lead, 19 to 18, another turnover for the Comets. Been some mental errors here by Alton in the past couple minutes. Yes. I mean, that was a nice rebound by Orr, but then uh, the outlet and turnover. The Wolf with it in the corner to Cisco. And he's just going to pull up and shoot the three. Wow. Why not? Deep three by Cisco yeah. right there. Right, and in your face. I mean, of course, if you can do it, why not? Burns with it, looking to make something happen. Gage Pitts out to Nicholson. Gage Pitts, free throw line, and probably going to hit that shot. Nice ball movement by the Bob Bobcats, 21 all. The fans certainly getting their money's worth. The Wolf to Cisco. Green Bell War, Cisco looking. No doubt thinking, started to pull the trigger there. Miller dribbles, gets it to Orr, battles hard to keep it, uh, to keep up with it. Double team goes up and tough shot, not there. The Wolf fighting for it, the ball is loose. And we have players on the floor. Cisco, Cisco comes up and not there. And the Bobcats coming the other way. Gage Cisco with it. And he's going to pull up for three. And oh, wow. does everything but go down. So here come the Comets the other way. DeWolf with it to Cisco. Cisco fakes, pulls up from 10. Uh -huh. rolls, and Hiss rolls out. So here we go the other way. Gage Pitts coming the other way to Jordan Andrews for three, not there. Andrews Corey felt Smith. good about that shot. You could tell by his yep. demeanor. Timeout, Coach Kelly. Yep. Going to kind of slow this thing yeah. down. Yep. It's like, holy cow, do we really want to play this? I think both coaches think, do we want to play this way? So 5.35 to go, first half action, 21 all. Exactly kind of what everybody thought it would be, and it certainly is a, uh, uh, you know, you know, whoever you paid your three bucks, maybe you need to get go give them a couple more bucks to enjoy this kind of game. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, also for Alton, they, they want to slow this game down because the slower they can play this game, uh, maybe the better because they ain't going to run out of legs as fast. You know, you're not going to struggle with the not having such a deep bench. So uh, that is something to think about. It is, but on the other hand is uh, part of it is is the – Alton Comets really uh, uh, like to go up and down the court to the point. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Uh, you know, uh, I was just looking in the stands because we've got uh, 
uh, we've got a problem in this uh, cheering section over there, not sure what's going on. Uh, we've got resource officer and uh, Dr. Steele. But anyway, back to the game is 21 all, and Alton is really likes to go up and down the court. I mean, they can play half court, but that's really not their uh, forte. But with five, playing five kids, six kids, on the other hand, I understand what you're saying, slow it down. It's just kind of, uh, uh, I think, more is pace themselves. And, uh, you know, really the, the Bobcats normally not not a team to go up and down the court either. They, ha they have more so this year than they have in the past, but that's really not their, uh, you know, strong suit either. Teams are at their benches now. I'm not real sure what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the uh, student section dressed in fatigues pretty much, and they're, you know, uh, don't know if they made anybody leave, but they've kind of cleared a few. And, uh, yeah, not for sure what's going on. So, anyway, uh, you kind of hate to see that uh, stoppage in action, something like that. So here we go. It's going to be Comet basketball, 531 to go. First half action, uh, tied at 21. Chandler Cisco with it, left wing, trying to find somebody to get it to. Gets it to the Wolf. The steal. The Bobcats, as usual, matchup zone. Chandler Cisco with it. Nice move inside to Smith. Fakes. Lost the handle, I had him in the air, goes up, not there. Still comes up without the Cisco at the top of the key and not there, fight for the rebound. And gonna be Burns with a rebound. Andrews the other way, Gage Pitt, good defense there. And nice finish nice there. By Grimes on the baseline for Lane Grimes for two. <laughs> on a dish from Andrews. So the Bobcats up two. Comets had a good opportunity there, and Smith just lost the handle for a second while the kid was in the air, and then he never could quite get his balance back. Cisco with it to steal. Smith penetrates, goes up strong, and scores. 23-23. <laughs> Bobcats running their offense, a little motion. They like to go baseline, and... Nick, Kate Nichols said, yeah, I can shoot from eight or 10 feet. So 25-23. The Wolf with it, looking, gets it back to Cisco. Smith trying to find somebody open. Cisco top of the key. Rowland Steele. It's got Burns. On him, Smith. DeWolf, long three, not there, but Cisco with the rebound turn, not there, fight loose. Smith, two rebounds there, and then we're gonna have a foul on Gage Pitts for the reach. That was nice, couple of re offensive rebounds keeping it alive by Jacob Smith to give the comments the possession under their own basket. Way out front to DeWolf. Takes it in, goes up, fakes, scores, not there, gets the rebound. Bodies on the floor, goes up again, no foul, and Nicholson comes out with it. Jordan Andrews with it on steal, goes up, shot not there, and Cisco with the rebound. First the Comets were upset, and then we go the other way, now the Thayer fans standing up. Cisco with it, pulls up and nice scores. Nice shot by Cisco. So we're back tied at 25. <clears throat> Gage pitch to and Andrews and over Andrews head out of bounds. Be Comet basketball, 2.51 to go. Uh, second quarter action, 25 all. For some reason, nobody's leaving. Usually at homecoming, they start kind of filtering out after they've crowned the queen. For some reason, nobody's leaving. There might be a game going on here, yeah. Tom. In fact, I think there's people coming back. Cisco with it The Smith. Sometimes I think kids at homecoming can get caught in kind of the the uh, the lights and everything yep. like that and uh, all the side things that are going on. That hasn't happened tonight yep. for Alton. 
Gage Pitts takes it inside and he was fouled and it's either, I don't know if it's gonna be Orr or Cisco. It's gonna be on Chandler Cisco. I believe that's his second I'm showing. It is. And 25 all at the line will be Gage Pitts to shoot two. One, trying to break, break the tie here. The first one is short for Gage. He don't and, miss a lot of free throws. No. Uh, Good teams don't. A couple subs in the game. We've got Landon Huckabee for Christian Orr, and we have Marcus Cochran for Ryland Steele. Bobcats still running uh, their starting five. This free throw is up for Gage. And breaks the tie. Bobcats up one, 26-25. You always have to wonder, there's big games you wonder, their hype so much, do they really match the hype? This one certainly has so far. Smith with it, goes strong, puts it up, not there, fight for the rebound. Oh, wow. And tipped in, I'm not for sure. I'm gonna give it to Smith, but there was two or three crashing there. The Including main, some people in green uniform. Yep, yep, and it was Huckabee and Smith there for us and a couple green, but the main, Thomas got the two point. Andrews with it, Burns down to Nicholson. He goes up, floater, not there, Huckabee with it. Looking to get it to a guard. And the Comets up one, 140 to go. Cisco with a deep three, rims out, not there. And coming the other way is the Bobcats. Long down to Nicholson, and he goes up as somebody didn't circle back. Here with just under a minute and a half left in the first half. Yep, uh, the big run in the court and got an easy bucket. Brandon DeWolf with it out front to Cochran. Comet's patient. Huckabee with it. Kind of a bad spot. He dribbled and picked it up. Got lucky there, because usually the Bobcats a lot of times will really trap, turn the pressure up if you use your dribble on that sideline and pick it up. Cisco with it. He's got Grimes in his face. Grimes knows to move out to him to the volleyball line because he knows his range. Like I said, these, these kids know each other. Smith with it. Back to Cisco. Kind of looks, kind of looks like Alt may be going to go for uh, the last shot of the half. That's what I was about. That's what I was fixing to say was, Brandon Wolf needs to be careful. I've seen more than once where a kid stand right there, and step on the the back court line, doing exactly this. Down to 15 seconds. As you can hear, you can hear some of the. Uh, Are they chanting the, boring? Yep. Yep. And Cochran with it. They, they attack the sophomore, uh, gets it to Huckabee, and he's going to have to put up a last second shot and hit side of the backboard. And that's going to do it for the half. Is 28 27 that they're Bobcats up one over the uh, uh, Alton Comets. What a half. Yeah, we're going to take you to our ad video. We'll be right back here with just a few minutes left at halftime, and we'll get you set for the second half. Welcome to Alton Sports Network Live. Andy Earls here, your owner, operator. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for all the support. This is year two of Alton Sports Network, and we're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. And we'll be right back with live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this live production. I want to personally say thank you to Dana Roberts and Colton Burnett from Alton Bank for all their great hospitality in our first year at Alton Sports Network. Locally owned and proud to be your hometown bank. Two convenient locations with Alton Bank in Alton, Missouri and Bank of Berkshire in Berkshire, Missouri. Let their friendly, professional, and knowledgeable staff help you in your business with all your banking needs. Contact the Alton branch at 417-778-7211. Alton Bank and Bank of Berkshire. Worth changing banks for. You will find a warm welcome at Shepherd's View. When you need that transition from nursing home care to a home, Shepherd's View is the right option to prepare you for living successfully and safely alone once again. When the demands of home upkeep, managing medications, and meal preparation become too much, 
Shepherd's Youth staff are ready to provide all the care you need. Our staff are well trained to provide safe, efficient personal care, diabetic care, nutritious meals, mediation administration, and social activities. Shepherd's View, here for you. West Plains Savings and Loan has been serving customers in West Plains and surrounding communities such as Alton, Couch, and Thayer since 1919. If you need an ag loan, consumer loan, business loan, or home loan, come see them at 417 West Broadway in West Plains, Missouri, or call 417-256-3042. The loan officers at West Plains Savings and Loan will be happy to sit down with you and talk to you about meeting any loan needs you might have. West Plains Savings and Loan is an equal housing lender and a member FDIC. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, we'll look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors, and designs, fridge magnets, car decals, and anything else you can imagine decal-wise. Owner Hannah Eddy has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs for Drop Dead Decals. But I'm not here bringing you the Alton Sports Network live streams. I'm working at Baldwin Chevrolet in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. I've been selling cars for 15 years now. I would love the opportunity to earn your business. We have four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from, and the majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me, Andy Earls, at Baldwin Chevrolet, or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. Alton Sports Network is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report, Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company, Dogpack Media, and our beloved Alton Sports Network. New to this season for Redline is the addition of Summersville Wildcats Live. If you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming event near you, simply reach out to myself, Andy Rills, at 501-413-9715. Redline, connect the world. Subscribe to our very own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider Channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Weekly posts, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. College Basketball Insider with Austin Bradley. Don't forget that select Alton Sports Network live streams will be seen on our Red Line Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and a YouTube app. Added advantage over Facebook, like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to subscribe to our Red Line Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go comments. As we record this ad, our Facebook page is up to nearly a whopping 1,500 followers in less than one full year. That is incredible considering the population of the Alton city limits, and we sincerely appreciate our loyal fan support of not only us, but these hardworking Comet and Luddy Comet athletes. Our streams have been seen by many scouts and college coaches, so let's keep this momentum going into our second year at ASN. Help us share these feeds and make sure to like and follow us. Let's go Comets! Hey, it's never too late to become a sponsor here with us at Alton Sports Network. When you sponsor us, you aren't just supporting the people who support Alton Athletics, you're supporting these young men and women who work so hard and represent the Comets in a manner that we can all be proud of. If you have questions about becoming a sponsor, please feel free to contact us on our Facebook or reach out to owner-operator Andy Earls at 501-413-9715. Let's go Comets!
Welcome to Alton Sports Network Live. Andy Earls here, your owner, operator. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for all the support. This is year two of Alton Sports Network, and we're excited to bring it to you week in and week out. We also want to say thank you to all of our amazing sponsors that you're about to see and hear in this ad video. And we'll be right back with live game action shortly, and we hope you enjoy this live production. I want to personally say thank you to Dana Roberts and Colton Burnett from Alton Bank for all their great hospitality in our first year at Alton Sports Network. Locally owned and proud to be your hometown bank. Two convenient locations with Alton Bank in Alton, Missouri and Bank of Birchtree in Birchtree, Missouri. Let their friendly, professional, and knowledgeable staff help you in your business with all your banking needs. Contact the Alton branch at 417-778-7211. Alton Bank and Bank of Birchtree. Worth changing banks for. You will find a warm welcome at Shepherd's View. When you need that transition from nursing home care to a home, Shepherd's View is the right option to prepare you for living successfully and safely alone once again. When the demands of home upkeep, managing medications, and meal preparation become too much, Shepherd's View staff are ready to provide all the care you need. Our staff are well trained to provide safe, efficient personal care, diabetic care, nutritious meals, mediation administration, and social activities. Shepherd's View, here for you. West Plains Savings and Loan has been serving customers in West Plains and surrounding communities such as Alton, Couch, and Thayer since 1919. Did an ag loan, consumer loan, business loan, or home loan? Come see them at 417 West Broadway in West Plains, Missouri, or call 417-256-3042. The loan officers at West Plains Savings and Loan will be happy to sit down with you and talk to you about meeting any loan needs you might have. West Plains Savings and Loan is an equal housing lender and a member FDIC. If yourself, your group, or your business is looking for decals, we'll look no further. Drop Dead Decals is your one-stop shop for all things decals. Monograms of all sizes, colors, and designs, fridge magnets, car decals, and anything else you can imagine decal-wise. Owner Hannah Eddy has great customer service and is eager to get going on your next decal project. Find them on Facebook and send them a message with your ideas, wants, and needs. Drop Dead Decals. But I'm not here bringing you the Alton Sports Network live streams. I'm working at Baldwin Chevrolet in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. I've been selling cars for 15 years now. I would love the opportunity to earn your business. We have four lots full of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. And the majority of these are backed by a lifetime warranty at no charge to you. Come see me, Andy Earls, at Baldwin Chevrolet or call me directly at 501-413-9715. I look forward to seeing you. Alton Sports Network is a Redline Media Lines company. Redline also operates the award-winning Corning Sports Report, Arkansas's number one viewed high school sports streaming company, Dogpack Media, and our beloved Alton Sports Network. New to this season for Redline is the addition of Summersville Wildcats Live. If you or your high school would like information from Redline about live streaming event near you, simply reach out to myself, Andy Earls, at 501-413-9715. Redline, connect the world. Subscribe to our very own Austin Bradley's College Basketball Insider Channel on YouTube. Austin and his passion and knowledge of college basketball shine through on this channel week in and week out. Weekly posts, bracket breakdowns, and much more analysis from Austin can be seen and even discussed on this channel by commenting with Austin on the chat feature each week. College Basketball Insider with Austin Bradley. Don't forget that select Alton Sports Network live streams will be seen on our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel this season. Watch on your big screen from the comfort of your home with a smart TV and a YouTube app. Added advantage over Facebook, like pausing and rewinding live events. Make sure to subscribe to our Redline Media Lines YouTube channel. Let's go comments. As we record this. All right, everybody, we are back now. Uh, just a little over a minute left until the second half. I asked you uh, right before the, right before we come back on, could you ask for a better first half? 
Uh, neither team, I think both coaches got to be pleased. Uh, one point game, uh, neither team in major foul trouble. Uh, Alton, a couple kids with two. Uh, they are no foul trouble. Uh, great first half. It'll be interesting to see what the coaches uh, drew up at halftime, what they come out uh, to do the second half. But a great uh, uh, first half. The score 28 27. The Bobcats leading the Comets by one. Running down the score, and Cisco with 11. The amazing part, the Wolf has not scored or six. Jacob Smith, seven, and Ryland still three. For the Thayer Bobcats, we have Andrews with two, which is another shocker. You have Gage Pitts, five, Keaton Nicholson, eight, Aiden Burns with eight, and Lane Grimes with five. I mean, who? You know, if you talk to Alton and said, hey, the Wolf doesn't score how you think you'll be at half, I'm guaranteed Coach Kelly's going, we're in trouble. You tell Coach Pitts, hey, Andrew's got two at half. What do you <laughs> think he's going to say? We're in trouble. Yeah. You know, uh, but, but they're not. I mean, it's a testament to the defense as we are back now for the third quarter. Well, and they know each other. I mean, they know the guard, Cisco and, and Jordan from at the volleyball line. Yeah, they just know what each other does. Bobcats with it first. They're up one. Gage Pitts with it. The Comets in a uh, uh, zone, sort of the matchup that they are not quite as aggressive, and we're going to have a block. And the Wolf just picked up his third foul. That could be huge. And so, going to be Bobcats uh, basketball on the far sideline. Gage pitch with it to Burns. He drives baseline. Going to go up over floater, up over. Or not there. You have to throw it pretty high to get it up over or and comments come away with it. Down one. Started the third quarter here in Alton. Packed house still. Not many people have left. The Wolf with it. The Smith at the high post puts it up. Not there. And I have to the say, Wolf. that wasn't a very good look, I don't think. That was Yeah, he didn't have his balance. It just really didn't uh, didn't elevate. Andrews uh -oh. from deep, and I shouldn't have said that about Jordan. Of course, everybody knew that, you know, he's like the Wolf, Cisco, capable at any time. So the Bobcats up four. See how the Comets can respond here. The Wolf with it on the right wing. Grimes on him. Inside to Smith goes, and he's going to be fouled. It's going to be on the floor, and I think that's going to be on Gage Pitt, and that may be Gage's second. Yep. Gage pitch with foul number two as the Comets got it inside and Jacob attacked. Do off with it. Looking, whoa, way up front to steal. Thought Grimes was about to go the other way on that one. Cisco with it. Ryland still, point guard brings it back out. Got, and Andrews almost to steal as Kind of a soft pass to the wing. You've got to be careful, especially these two teams. You make a soft pass, and there is liable to be a dunk on the other end. Comet basketball trailing by four, 6.20 to go third quarter. The Wolf going around two or three screens. Now to the corner. Just go to Smith. Ryland Steele for three. Not there. Fight for the rebound. And it's going to be green basketball, staying off of the Comets. So it's going to be Bobcat basketball. 31-27, Bobcats on top. Approaching the six-minute mark, third quarter action. Gage Pitts. Aiden Barnes to Lane Grimes. Andrews penetrates, going to pull it. And a little stutter step, not there. Fight for the rebound or tips it, and Smith comes down with it. Cisco, fake, goes up, pulls up from 10. And Cisco with two, first yeah, nice two of the second there, half. Cisco. To bring the Comets back within two. Burns to Andrews, back to Burns. Little stutter step goes up. Blocked by Orr. Blocked by Orr, and here comes Cisco, gonna go up, and, oh. and he Oh, is. wow! Blocked by Orr, and here comes Cisco, gonna go up, and, oh. and he, oh. that's what everybody came to see, even though he didn't flush it. It was on the rim, and it ended up going. 
Gage pit from the corner, not there, and fight for the rebound, and Ryland still with it. DeWolf got his hand on it a couple times, still came down with DeSisco to inside the or tipped away by Nicholson. Here comes Gage Pitts, one on a bunch, the floater, not there, Nicholson with a rebound, blocked Good. by Orr, got his hand on it, and Orr comes up with it. Good he gets defense, it to Cisco sir. again. You know what Cisco's wanting to do? 160 what? spin, not there, the Wolf. Oh, could have been foul number four, the officials let him play, and the Kudos Bobcats the come. officials right there. Yep, Bobcats come the other way. I don't think it was a foul, but could have been because it was. he kept tipping it up high. 31 all, Bobcats with the ball. We're approaching the four minute mark, fourth in the third quarter. Gage Pitts looking for Burns, back out to Grimes. Andrew, Andrews penetrate, pulls up, goes up, and Andrews scores. So 33-31, Bobcats. Halfway through the third. Yep, Riley still walking it down to the Wolf. The Wolf to Cisco. Hand to Smith. Still the Wolf. The Wolf baseline. And lost a handle on it, but it went to Cisco. The Wolf with it inside the oar. Not there. Couldn't get it to go, and Pitts coming the other way. The Andrews spins, and the alt crowd won the walk. It's out the grime, shoots, and three. to go, third quarter. Bobcats up five. Smith with it to steal. Started to give it to Brandon and not. Cisco with it, looking for the deep three, looking for the screen for Moore. To Orr, or now decided to go in. It's gonna be an offensive foul as he just literally ran over Gage Pitt. No. <clears throat> and Coach Kelly calls a timeout and he's talking to the official on that. And I think what Kelly's talking to him down there and I think pretty well everybody would be in agreement they missed a walk down there and they kicked out the Grimes for three and that's what he's talking to him about that I don't think it was the offensive foul but I kind of thought he took a couple steps there and then they kicked out the Grimes for three but that happens yeah 36 31 I mean still a very close game but you can't afford losing your composure like that it's just uh, I mean or just put his shoulder down and just ran over uh, Pitts he's he's a senior coach's son smart and he just took it and basically a turnover. And so the Comets need to uh, regroup here a little bit. 2.56 to go, third quarter, 36-31. Uh, you know, they just need a couple stops. They're going to walk it up. Gage Pitts with it. Here we go. Andrews to Pitts. The Nicholson, he's been kind of quiet the second half. And... Crowd got a kick out of that as Chandler Cisco kicked it, hit the official. Poor officials can't get a break. And it's going to be uh, A. Burns in, into Gage Pitts. Fake to three. Now it's going to be Andrews wide open. Not there. And you talk about a break for Alton right there. Yep. Or went off Orr's hand out of bounds. It's going to be Bobcat basketball. I mean, Jordan. Won't miss many of those. Absolutely nobody within 15 feet of him shooting a three. Pitts having trouble finding somebody. Finally gets it to Grimes. Still tried to steal it, didn't it? Andrews inside, triple team to Burns. Shake and bake. Now the Grimes. Back to Grimes. Got to shoot up over or not there. Cisco with the rebound. A little bit of contact there, but playing on. Comments down five to the Bobcats. Smith with it. Curled it. Corey Miller in the game now, came in for DeWolf. Smith with it, penetrate, goes up. Not there, but Orr with a rebound, uh, couldn't and finish. And draws the foul. But gonna draw the foul.
And that was on Green Lane Grimes, his second. At the line to shoot two is Christian Orr. And Christian with the first free throw, his first point of the second half. Smith's come up short on a couple of shots, just hadn't looked comfortable. He's attacking well, and, and Christian to bail him out on that. This one up is not there. So here come the Bobcats. They're up by four. Lane Grimes left wing, out to Burns. Jordan Andrews in the lane, dishes to Gage Pitts. Not there, long rebound, and it's gonna be Alton, Alton. basketball. Yep. 145 to go, third quarter, 36-32. Jacob Smith uh, down low to or to Ryland Steele, not there, and Lane Grimes with the rebound. Nicholson and Orr there and out to Grimes. Jordan Andrews with it. Down the baseline to Nicholson. And the Bobcats up six. Nice baseline move by Nicholson. You catch the ball down there, especially a big, uh, that's trouble. 112 to go. Comets need a basket pretty bad here. Kind of stopped, as I say, stopped the bleeding. Chandler Sisko with it. He's trying, gonna try to make something. Goes down to Orr. Spin move and goes up. Not there. Corey Miller fights with it. Gage Pitts comes up with it. Gets it to Grimes. And I wouldn't be surprised up six to see the Bobcats go for one shot here as we approach under 45 seconds, third quarter, 38-32. It'll yep. be Alton Ball to start the fourth. And as expected, Gabe Pitts just standing out there dribbling. This could, this could be pretty big right here. If the Comets could get a stop, or if the Bobcats uh, uh, can finish, usually in this situation they're looking for Andrews. He's usually probably shooting 50, 60 percent to end the quarters on threes. Gage Pitts instead takes it inside, not there. Goes up, follows, not there. Corey Miller, and that's going to do it. After three quarters, 38-32, the Bobcats on top of the Alton Commons. We'll get ready to set up for the uh, fourth quarter. Commons down six at home. Uh, only three points for the, uh, actually five points for the uh, Comets uh, scored that quarter. The Bobcats, uh, three, six, eight, ten. But I mean, who would think that somebody could hold the Bob the Comets to five points in a uh, in a half? And Brandon the Wolf still has not scored. And I'm not not picking on the young man. It's just their nose. Uh, I mean, when he goes to penetrate or make a move, he's double triple team. And I mean, they're really uh, you could tell part of the game plan was to shut uh, Brandon the Wolf down. And really, you know, they haven't. The Comets haven't done a bad job on Andrews when you figure uh, Andrews has seven points through three quarters. And yeah, that, that kid's averaging probably 20-some. I wouldn't be surprised because he's had some 30-point games. So, uh, And that's where your other players have to step up, and we'll see who does here in the fourth quarter. 38-32, Thayer Bobcats over the Alton Comets. Start the fourth quarter. Brandon the Wolf in the corner. Back out to Cisco, reset. Cisco, about the three, pulls up, which he likes to do, kind of jumped in, thought he'd get, was going for the contact, not there, triple team, trying to get rid of it, gets it to Orr. Back to the Wolf under the basket, fakes goes up. And blocked by Nicholson. And we're going to have Jacob Smith with the foul coming the other way. Uh, first foul on Jacob Smith. Uh, third team foul on the Comets. So the Bobcats were inbounded. 
I will say this, in the fourth quarter over in Kabul, uh, Thayer did jump up to about a 10 to 14 point lead and Alton's pressure, uh, when they started to pressure at the end and Alton cut into it again. Yep. Well, I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see when or if Coach Kelly decides maybe to apply some pressure as Jordan Andrews gets to the basket and scores there. Yep, uh, yep. eight point lead for the Bobcats and you know, it's really, really not Alton's defense as much as just, just not scoring. Cisco with it to uh, Steele. Into the corner to Smith. Out to Cisco. Going to shoot to fight long three. In and out, not there. Went for the rebound. Burns with it down to Grimes. And to nice give and go from like to Nicholson and Quickly, timeout for the Alton Comets and the Thayer Bobcats up 10. That's basically how you run a break there. They got it down to the corner, penetrated, bounced to the big, and the big off the glass and in. 42-32, the Thayer Bobcats on top of the Alton Comets. 6.32 to go. Fourth quarter action here at Alton. Not over by a long shot, though. Oh, no, I mean, especially with the three-point shot, um, you know, a couple threes and right back in it. Uh, like you said, up at Kabul, uh, Thayer got him down, and Alton uh, uh, started pressing, really at gambling, got some turnovers, and, uh, you know, got close. And, yeah, anything's possible high school basketball. It is really the scoring. I mean, uh, Alton has not scored in the fourth and scored five points in the third. So when you've played uh, uh, minute and a half, nine and a half minutes, and you've scored five points, it's hard to win ball games. You know, versus the Thayer Bobcats, you know, 5, 7, 10, 14 to 5. They've outscored us here in the uh, second half. I mean, that's the story. And like I said, you know, you're not going to stop, keep Thayer from scoring. You've just got to score with, like we did the first half. You've got to score with them. But here we go. Ryland still. They're still in that 1-3-1 one, one matchup. Brandon to Wolf with it way out front. You know, really not looking to shoot the three. I realize somebody's on him, but you know, just about it. You know, he he can pull the trigger. Just go with it to Wolf baseline. Gets it to Smith. We're going to have a foul down on the baseline. I don't know if it's going to be on Nicholson or going to be on Gage Pitts. That's his third which could be something to watch if because uh, he plays along the baseline there the, you know certainly you know don't know if they really wants to go to their bench with Landry uh, uh, Pitts out. Brylin still looking to get it in gets it to Orr. Started to shoot the 10 footer decides to uh, get it back out to Smith set the offense. Rylan to DeWolf. Cisco Smith for three. Not there, and the Bobcats off and running, three on one. It burns with it, tipped, and the Comets able to get back and set their defense, which I'm sure the Bobcats don't mind because they'll just run some time. Andrews with it, dishes to Gage Pitts up off the glass, and good. And the Bobcats up 12. All really needing to score here. Yep, the Wolf with it, and to the Wolf goes and tries to pass down to uh, Orr, and Bobcats got their fingers on it, went off of Orr, and it's Bobcat basketball, 44-32, 5-10 to go fourth quarter, and headed the other way. Here are the Bob, or the Comets putting a little pressure on the Bobcats. Uh, we'll see how, you know, Works. Uh, Keith Nicholson baseline. He's had a nice game. Nice finish going the baseline, banging it off the glass over or 46-32. Wolf to Cisco. Cisco looking to make something happen. Goes in, plays through contact. Can't get the foul, or can't get the shot to fall. But he did get the foul. If they tried to challenge them, hard hard to block Chandler's shot. He'll go to the line to shoot two. The foul was on uh, Nicholson, his second. Still no major foul trouble. Pitch was three, and he's the only one with three. 
Uh, Cisco for for two. First free throw for uh, Chandler is good. His first point of the uh, fourth quarter and the first point for the Comets. Almost four minutes to go in their first point. This Let's is go. a nice chance, though, for Alton to get some points with the clock stopped. That and put the pressure, which that's what they've done. You know, could use a turnover or two. Gage Pitts with it. The Burns back to Pitts. Turns the corner. Got uh, the whip putting pressure on him. Still up on Burns. Now Andrews with it. Takes it down the free throw line. Look shot. Uh, pulls it back out. We have Burns going with it to scoop shot. Not there. And Keaton able to tip it to Burns. And Aiden Burns with his first two of the second half. Just go with it, looking someone to get it to. Gets it to Smith. Good hand. Smith takes it in. And it did. Oh, Smith kicked it out of bounds. So it's going to be Bobcat basketball. 48-34, 408 to go. As the Bobcats with a 14-point lead in the basketball. The Comets trying to press to get a turnover. Burns with it back court. The guy, grind, or Pitts. To Andrews. Andrews for a long three. That's a big shot. And Andrews, nothing but net on that, which that, that he can do. So 17, about like the JV that the Alton did to the Bobcats. Turn it on the fourth quarter. The Bobcats turn it around to varsity to the Comets. Chandler Cisco with it. He pulls up and shoots. Back iron not there. Rylan still with it. Goes baseline, and he's going to be fouled by Gage Pitts. Will be foul number four, I believe, on Gage. Yep, for a blocking foul on the baseline. So, yes, Dad looking down the bench going, hmm, 336 to us sub. Nope. And Gage staying in the game. Way out to DeWolf. Andrew's got a hand on it. But anyway, DeWolf goes, dishes off to Orr. Nice dish by DeWolf to Orr. 51-36. Gage pitched the other way. Triple team lost it, but came back up with it. Andrews with it. Keith Nicholson baseline, looked the shot, gets it out to Burns. To Andrews. Andrews penetrates to Nicholson, goes in, tries to dunk it, and he missed. Comets come the other way. Chandler Cisco up and not there, gets his own rebound, puts it up, and still won't go. And they're going to say off of the Comets. Couple offensive rebounds for the Comets, but couldn't finish. 2.58 to go, 51-36. Golden opportunity at that time as the Bobcats missed the easy one and, and uh, uh, couldn't score. Andrews the other way and goes up under the basket. And Andrews for the finish and he's gonna get the shooter, you know, free throw. 53-36. Free throw is good for Andrews. And 54-36. The Wolf with it. Out to steal. Fakes, drives, Cisco. Cisco fakes, goes up, left hand, floater not there, or with the rebound and in. 16 point game here with two and a half left. Yeah. Gage pitch with it, two on two. Gonna say, you know, they're smart enough not to force Andrews with it. Takes it inside, dishes to Nicholson, goes up over, or. That was a nice finish there by yes. Nicholson. Yes, he's had a nice game. And 56-38. Chandler Cisco with it. Getting the screen from Orr. Goes right, trying to get baseline, spin goes up. And I think he kind of got grabbed on that one, no call. And we're going to have him back toward a little frustration foul. And that's going to be on Chandler Cisco. I'm showing his third. A little frustrated, like I said. I thought when he did the spin move, the, they grabbed him as he turned because he just doesn't shoot short that shot from six feet. But that's basketball. Aiden Burns with it, double team. Gets it to Grimes, back to Burns out front. Once again, double Tim, good pressure by the Comets. He steps through, throws it down to Pitts. Pitts gonna pull up from 10, and the Bobcats are feeling it. 58-38, up 20, with 1.34 to go. 
Chandler Sisko started to go the long three, pulls up, went to pass it to Steele, and they're saying it was tipped. It's going to be Comet basketball. Uh, Coach Kelly says, you know, thanks seniors, but he pulls three of them out. Uh, DeWolf, Cisco, and Orr out. We've got uh, Corey Miller, Marcus Cochran, and Landon Huckabee in. Going to be Comet basketball under their own basket, down 21-29 to go third quarter. Cochran tried to pass out front, didn't get it high enough, and here the, the Bobcats with it. I'll be surprised if they shoot here. They may, but I'd say up 20, they'll just run clock. Yeah, I mean, Coach Pitts is a pretty class. Is evil, yeah. well, not a pretty. He's a very classy guy. Yeah. He's not. He's not one to run the score up or right. anything like that. So. Well, I said that, and there goes uh, Andrews to try to score, and we're going to have a foul on the on the shot. Looks like it maybe was on Corey Miller, I believe. His first. Andrews to line to shoot too. First one is good for Andrews. He's had nine, got nine here in the fourth quarter. Second one is good as well. And 60-38. Bobcats up at 22. Ryland Steele decides to take it down all the way and nice finish by Ryland Steele. So will they play each other again? This nope. is it, isn't it? This is it. Used to, you, you would be looking at uh, district, uh, but because of a couple students, uh, Thayer's 3A, Alton's 2A, so this this will be it. So Thayer will have uh, bragging rights, uh, uh, I guess, for the rest of their lives because this will be it in high school. 62-42, uh, Bobcats up by 20. But no, nah, like you said, there is 3A. They'll, they, they're they in Houston with Hartville, Mansfield. Uh, pretty good district up that way. And Alton, of course, is back to Van Buren. Will probably be the one seed if there's not a major upset uh, at Van Buren, the 2A district. But used to, it was always the third time or sometimes fourth time because it was the Liberty Tournament and the uh, district tournament. Yep. And that's the ball game, the final, 62-42, the Bobcats over the Alton Comets. Yeah, that was, I mean, first half was phenomenal for both for both sides. Uh, Alton just couldn't, it felt like they couldn't find the bucket in the second yep. half there. Well, scored five points in the third quarter, so that's obvious, yes. And, I mean, uh, versus the Bobcats, you know, uh, didn't have a great third quarter, but uh, six, eight, ten, you know, that scored ten to five. And then the fourth quarter, just the momentum. And, and really, that's what happens in these games is just uh, whichever team happens to get on the roll. Because both teams, you spend so much energy. And then all of a sudden, when the other team gets on a roll, their adrenaline kicks in, and, and you just kind of go, yeah. you know, and, and you see that. But still, good, good showing. I mean, the fans definitely, get, I think, got their money's worth tonight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, you know, you wish that you wish they could play one more time, but uh, but guys, I think I think I'm ready to go home. I got a long drive home. Yep. I'm sure you're ready to go home. Yep. And yep. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming out yep. to watch us. Uh, the boys. We are had, I was go just going to say the Alton boys are off till next week. Uh, they start the Big Springs Conference tournament, uh, and the girls uh, uh, the girls play Friday at Naylor, then the boys and the girls and the JV all in the Big Springs Conference Tournament start next week. So lots of basketball next week. Yeah, we'll have every game of that. Uh, guys, we had a, we had 280 viewers at one point in uh, tonight's game. We're, we're super thankful for everybody that watched. Um, that's something that I know, at least for me, that's the most I've ever had. I know Andy's had more, but that's the most I've, I've ever had on one of, one of the streams that I've been running at one point, I think. Uh, Mr. Clary here for coming out of retirement, as Andy put yeah. it. Uh, we appreciate his help. It was yeah. awesome getting to work with you again. Uh, and, guys, for Tom Clary, Austin Bradley, and uh, Alton Sports Network, we will see you guys next week at the Big Springs Conference Tournament. Everybody have a great night and be safe. Yep.